Yeah, see the original Earth model, um, it started at the 13th paradigm. That's when the dawn of creation came in and that was a model of the Holy O. That was the only paradigm on the planet until we got infected with the belief and we got unzipped all the way to the, from the top of the paradigm ladder to the very bottom. We had to want the first paradigm. You just have one dimension of reality calculating into consciousness. So we went from a mighty being of the goddess of the Holy O to the dumbest being on the planet. And we became separate from all aspects of our divineness and in our low consciousness perceived all of that to be separate from us and outside of us when actually it's a part of us. And these are the personalities we've held in high esteem from Melchizedek, Saint Germain, Jesus. These are all aspects of our own higher consciousness. And when we get all the way zipped up to the top, we are holy old same. We are all the same, and we share the common O when we perceive and manifest from the knowing of our inner holiness. One is the first separation of O. One is identity. One is I am. When you're an I am, you're no longer sane. You have separated yourself from sane, and you are now in the egoic mind. And then two is the matriarchal. It's the the mother of duality, uh, but matriarchal, patriarchal, patriarchal being the first paradigm, are actually broken ends of a form of wholeness that have now been recombined uh, and then merged into oneness with the holy O universes to create the seventh star grid, the new concentric ring, outermost ring around the ball of reality of the earth that will root, that will create this holy omega, the divine feminine model. We'll be returning to this planet between 2012 and 2015. And this merging paradigms of higher consciousness is what has fueled this whole ascension process. And it started in 2004 with the emergence of the fourth paradigm. It took from the dawn, uh, 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 the dawn of time when the great downfall occurred until 2004 to get the light to quit mutating that caused the downfall coming through Orion and Sirius. And uh, once that was completed, uh, the ascension process could start. So it's all a big plan of master design to clean up this mess and get us back into our holy order of the Holy O. 2004 is when the first paradigm came in. But, you know, there's been a, a service going on all these steps had to be taken. In 1999, the cosmic pulse was reset, and um, that was a big time. I mean, there's been a, a lot of steps getting us up to getting the light to quit mutating to start the ascension process. And uh, this was the service of incredible light workers of, of an age that, you know, they've, a lot of them have already passed off the planet. So people have been working on this a long time in really hard conditions with about, without very much support. But that's not true anymore. It's exactly the opposite. Um, things are going so fast now. You know, things were stuck. And you imagine having several lifetimes in the very same low paradigm. And in this lifetime, we've already had 11 shifts since 2004. So this is a time, this is an age of ascension when people get to reconnect with their inner holiness so that they can know and no longer be this human being of belief that tears up the planet, uh, conflicts with life, makes choices of bad uh, uh, that that hurt other people, that uh, take good from other people, and hurt the planet. You know that's uh, the product of free will. Uh, your will, when you receive the knowing of your, I'm sorry, the, the, your will when you're receiving the belief of your ego, and divine will, um, that which we had before the downfall. This divine will comes from the knowing of your inner holiness and it would never occur to you to want something in your life that wasn't good for others and good for the planet. That came about with this thing called free will, which is an aberration of this model of one, which is about belief, fear, control and domination, losing 90% of your life expression. It is a slavery prisoner system that we've been in on this earth ever since we were, we were invaded by these extraterrestrial alien invaders. And they've all been kicked out. They've all been merged back. See, these model of one beings 
have been merged back with the model of two, the matriarchal. The patriarchal and matriarchal have been put back into wholeness and then merged into wholeness with the holy old universes to create the seventh star grid. So the mess has been cleaned up. It's now about getting it out of people. Well, my interpretation is the model of the holy O, and it's actually the termination of 2012 that gets us into the full ascension process. And in the holy O, this is a very delightful event. Uh, only in the model of one is this spooky and scary. But in the holy O, uh, it's a wonderful thing. It's when ascension time occurs and um, lots of good things are happening. Uh, but at the end of this calendar, and um, a, new, um, a new time, a new calendar will come onto this earth. And uh, between 2012 and 2015, the Holy Omega model will replace the patriarchal that's been on this earth. That stuff's already been healed up in the high levels of the etheric. It's simply a matter of getting it out of people. And so it's a good thing. On the cutting edge of the change in the higher consciousness, we have now gotten past the downfall and we're reconnecting to our holiness through the recreation of our androgyn, which you have a divine feminine and a divine masculine within you that share a common O. The third circuitry of the androgyn is, synchronized, or is synthesized and this is your holy O sexuality that comes forth in your being as a fountain of eternal life that fuels all of the higher gifts of our being that will be coming in uh, quite shortly, actually, of telepathy, teleportation. Every need that you have will be satisfied from your f fountain of eternal life, and you will need no more of the outer world. We'll just be sharing joy and happiness with each other. No more working. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You see, this energy field, your Holy Spirit, that was around the first cell of your being, is actually who you are. You've always been the same one you are now. And uh, this is a eternal life form. It never dies. The only part of us that dies is the part that came from the, the earth. It simply goes back to it. And the only thing in life that fears death is the ego of the fragmented soul. And... Um, but there is no death. It's eternal life, and we've all been around here since the dawn of creation. If you wasn't on this earth, you were somewhere else. And, um, and there's lots of options and choices. Um, but that's, um, that's the illusion. Death is actually an illusion. The extraterrestrial alien invader that set off the downfall on this earth was from another system of universes, a system of one. And... Um, this is a, um, a patriarchal system that invaded this earth and um, created this patriarchal that we have now. And um, these are the so-called gods of one. And um, um, they are a uh, aberration from a, a feminine expression um, that became known as the priestess of the model of two. But these are mere images of one another and as of July the 16th, 2011, on the full moon, <clears throat> when the eclipse occurred, the matriarchal and patriarchal were combined back into wholeness and merged with the uh, holy old universes to create the seventh star grid. So there is no longer any of these alien invaders. None of them exist anymore. They're all now in the form of an androgyne. And this is the way of the plan of grand design. It never leaves fragments. It never creates a junk heap. Everything is reconstitutable back into its wholeness, for it all was formerly whole and became fragmented. And, and that's the way it works. And so, <clears throat> so fear not and live your life in love, peace, and hope. And you can do this ascension process. You do the parable of Christ consciousness every day, and you will do just wonderful. So fear not and love much. The most important message I'd like to, for people to understand is that this is a time in life when every person can reconnect with their inner holiness to have an inner knowing. And it is the most profound experience in life 
to have a connection in your consciousness with the living holiness that beats your heart and to understand the inner relation that you have with all of life. And this is being made possible through these paradigms of higher consciousness integrating the earth grid. And all that's required of any person is to become proficient at practicing the parable of Christ consciousness, which is the easiest path on this earth. And, uh, and it's just like learning to ride a bicycle. It takes a little persistence. Uh, usually two weeks of 20 seconds each morning is sufficient to get one started and to get results. My purpose is to be the servant of holy divine healing. And um, my purpose is to be the servant of the, the person that seeks. And um, my place is beneath people's feet. And uh, the author of this work is the holiness within the person that I work on. But, but my part is the servant. And I have the gift that uh, can utilize this information and make this happen. But it's done as me being a servant. Well, being a chiropractor, I'm very uh, um, experienced in analyzing leg links. Um, it's a kinesiology method to retrieve information from innate intelligence of the client. It's widely used in um, holistic healing procedures. And um, second day back to the office from my uh, near-death experience, I discovered that through that same process, I could connect and communicate with the inner holiness of the patient. I asked yes and no question, the right leg goes short on yes, the left one on no, and I receive the information telepathically and I validate it with the patient's feet as being the right way we need to go. And um, so I'm at their feet, I'm working beneath their feet, a perfect position for a servant. The thing that brings me the most joy is to be able to do holy divine healing, to be a servant for a person's inner holiness, to allow a person's inner holiness to speak to their needs brings me the most joy in life. I do this on vacation. <laughs> so it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I, I want to do it every day. It's, it's only work if you'd rather be doing something else, and this is my joy. I love this.